Hello, hello, hello. We are making a video. Oh, yes. Papa Dog, awesome. Awesome, awesome. We are feeling good. We are back at the other house, at the main house. And it is two days later, but I'm making part two now for my video on jealousy meditation. So, I started with part one on the day when I had been crying and I just wanted to capture a couple of thoughts at least before my tablet ran out of energy and I hadn't paying attention so the battery is now starting to get old and needs to be charged up much more frequently and the battery doesn't last very long you know it's just two hours of watching videos and it's discharged it used to hold up much longer more like five hours but whatever it doesn't matter you know these things get all too these machines and then we have to buy a new one so but it's okay you know i charge it up a lot and it doesn't matter um, I charge this up now, so hopefully I can talk until the video cap uploading, making capacity, recording capacity has reached. So I just wanted to share this beautiful, beautiful afternoon with you in this amazing garden, in this Garden Eden, in this paradise. There are my roses and the papa dog enjoying himself in the sun and the beautiful beautiful cedar trees and the christmas trees and the rhododendron and the azalea and the grass and all the sprouts and all the greens are precious equally precious okay there are no weeds i don't call anything weed there there are people that call things weed they call marijuana weed i don't call anything weed so because you know weed it's sort of like it sort of has a, has this the meaning of something people want to want to pluck out and, and hopefully they just pluck it out with the hand hopefully they don't poison anything so you know there are no weeds everything has its place even the thorny stuff is important and vital and if you make tea with the thorny stuff you'll be amazed what happens um the other day you know when i was feeling bad i think it was after i made the video i had made a tea from the day before we went to the beach went for a longer walk and we went up into the dunes and we sat there for a while and watched the sunset and it was absolutely gorgeous and there were a couple of purple and yellow little flowers growing there in the dunes and i picked them up and some of them were succulent actually and just unique to that area had always been there or had been there for a very long time for millions and millions of years and I picked them up and then the next day when I was feeling bad I made a tea with those and I also added I added ivy leaves into it as well I didn't have my gloves there because I wanted to also cut some of the blackberry into it and some of the Oregon grape and those are all a bit thorny and they're all people call them weed they are you know the the stuff that people call weed is actually the most potent liver detoxifier that you can imagine and ivy is actually antifungal in a very natural way in a liver protecting way you know people that take fungal medication that is created by the pharma industry made from all kinds of chemical fusions and stuff like this that's not good for the liver at all 
You know, you have to take natural stuff in its whole form, not fused or isolated components or you know manipulated in any way but whole in its whole form and you drink that and that is completely nourishing and healing and when I made that tea the other day at the other house Paul and I had been fighting and I had been crying and it was very exhausting and I made that tea and the moment I put that cup to my nose that steam that came off that tea that pure tea just from nature picked fresh I immediately felt this unimaginable incredibly infinite power com coming from that essence and I already felt better a moment I just breathe in that steam and then I drank it and it felt so calming and strengthening at the same time it was so powerful I slept like like I slept in a coma like I it kind of goes to show that my body felt finally felt relaxed from these amazing herbs and I was able to sleep for a very long time. So fresh picked so-called weeds that people find or you know, belly flowers or grass flowers or dune flowers. You know, pineapple weed is a very powerful, 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 potent, almost like a narcotic. It's so nerve calming. It it completely floors you. You know, if you can't sleep well, pineapple weed does it. It's closely related to chamomile. It smells similar to chamomile. Flowers are similar to chamomile, but it grows in the dunes. And it grows in actually in sandy soil. So and it doesn't even need that much water. So the water there percolates through very quickly. It doesn't retain. So sandy, almost rather just slightly damp soil. And with lots of sunshine. And the pineapple weed, I saw the pineapple weed there. It didn't have flowers at this time right now. I think it blooms more in spring. So, sunlight, when it shines through, or the light, the bright light from the top, has an effect on my retina, which in turn has an effect on my, I don't know, on the epitels inside of my sinus canals, and for some reason, that caused me to sneeze. It's a genetic condition, my dad has it too. So not everybody has that. So I want to pick up on what I was talking about in part one from two days ago. Let me get into it. I don't want to miss anything. I don't want to get sidetracked either. I want to capture everything also that is connected to it. There's a hum hummingbird in there. Hello, hummingbird sitting in there. Yes, that's so cute. So I don't want to miss anything. This is very important what I wanted to talk about. Because I did a meditation and I started out just holding these large rocks, like petrified rocks at the other house. Listening to Jiddu Krishna Morty, that's how I start my meditations. And usually that, that's what I do when I listen to them. That's my meditation. I usually don't meditate just in stillness, but sometimes I sit in nature and I listen to nature sounds. Or sometimes when it rains or when the birds are chirping outside the window, I have my window open and I just lie there in bed and, and I just observe and I just listen and take the stimulation from to my senses, into my system, and I just let my mind 
go, I don't resist, I can't be bottling anything up, you know, I can't be saying, oh, you have to quiet yourself all the time, that's not, that's not real meditation, that's more like an exercise of mind, my mind practice. That's good too, but a real meditation is when you don't resist anything and when you don't act anything out. You just sit there and you let it wash up. You let it trick, tickle up and and you let it roll its way up uh, into consciousness. And that's where it wants to be. It wants to come into consciousness and it wants to be listened to. And so jealousy rolled up into consciousness. And with it, this overwhelming thought that, this fear and this thought that I'm never going to dissolve it. That's what it feels like. I'm never going to dissolve my jealousy. But I allow that too, you know. You don't want to suppress anything, anything. Just any doubt and thought and, and fear, let it come up and let it talk to you. And it's there for a reason, you know, it wants to talk to you. The jealousy wants to talk to you. I don't want to suppress anything. Society has suppressed all of these things collectively for hundreds of years. It's time now that this becomes dissolved and integrated, really integrated, wholly integrated into consciousness. We need to first become open to ourselves and most people are not open to themselves and they bottle things up and then they live in this extreme tension of bottled up stuff and then fear of the fear arises and and then that has to be bottled up because they don't want to be seen as weak and all of these things just become compounded you know it becomes it, it becomes tenfolds hundredfolds compounded until people feel like they need to take a drug in order to even sleep because how can the body sleep if you are in a tension and that's also very interesting what dr bruce lipton says i brought my kindle with me i was reading in the book for the last couple of days we don't have internet at the other house so that always gives me the opportunity to read more to sit much more focus on one thing instead of being too distracted with too many things on the internet so on and when i'm on the internet i have to also uh, i have to really practice focusing that's when we have to practice focusing our minds and all of this but in meditation we need to just sit there and allow all of this. But what Dr. Bruce Lipton said about the honeymoon effect, like people who are madly in love, you know, in love, that's also another very questionable word, because that's not love. <laughs> love is something completely different. That has nothing to do with man and woman or, or a gay relationship or a, any kind of romantic relationship. Love is compassion. It's got some totally different chapter. So, but, you know, he uses the uh, commercial words because that's what people know, of course. So, use use the honeymoon effect. Or it's also, you know, it, it captures people. He's also, I think, he's very good at marketing his books. So, and there's nothing wrong with it. So, I'm not very good with marketing my books. So anyway, yeah, the honeymoon effect that captures people's... If, if someone else had written that book with that title, I would not have touched it. <laughs> For me, it's like, it turns me away when I see anything that's commercially, you know, accepted. So, because the commercial stuff I don't like, I, I usually turn away from it because I find it boring. It's not, doesn't pertain to me. I like the... And like the niche things, you know, the niche things, the the interesting things, the things that are that are weird and that are obscure, that are occult, that are, you know, just occult of from the view of the public, of course. But that the, the niche things that are honest, 
know, that are natural. So, but Dr. Bruce Lipton, you know, I just, I just need to see the name Dr. Bruce Lipton and I'm buying the book, you know, I want to buy every book that he writes. That guy is a genius. That guy is amazing. That guy is fantastic. That's an angel, very high advanced angel level soul. And is he's just amazing on every level, you know, absolutely phenomenal guy. And very funny also, and very honest, very honest, touchingly honest you know, about his own life, that he, he uses his own life as an example, which I think is fantastic. Everyone should be doing this. I know it's not that easy for most people, you know, to bring out something from their own lives. They would rather refer to someone else, like my dad would like, Let's talk about Nikki's problems. You know, Nikki the scapegoat. You know, I don't like that word scapegoat. So you know, Nikki the the weirdo. You know. So we'll talk about her. Then we don't have to talk about him, my dad. So and I pointed it out very quickly. I said, Ah, I see. To distract from your issues. And you get a little bit blushed. Just a little bit blushy. Blush, blush, blush. <laughs> no, I love my dad. I love him very much. You know, we, we all have issues. And I told him I'm not going to hold that against him. Whatever issues, <laughs> whatever, whatever issues there were or weaknesses, you know. Most people are weak. We're, we're mammals, you know. We have desires. We, we have... And and that's where also that's why all of this is so convoluted because people they suppress their desires to fit into a neurotic society. So then everything becomes more neurotic because people suppress even more of their naturalness. So and then things become really ridiculous, you know, when we're mammals and we have needs and that's be, be then they put the lid of shame on it. As sa the same as with jealousy, they put the li lid of shame on that too, or they put the lid of shame on all kinds of things. Take these lids off and recycle them and let the stuff come to the surface in yourselves, whatever it is that you have been wanting to hide, bring it up talk about it first of all think about it and have an inner dialogue with yourself about this this is the most important and the most liberating thing in the world so dr bruce lipton mentioned that the people that have the honeymoon effect you know that first phase when they're madly in love with each other madly is the key word here and it is mad it's madness because it's not real, real. It's not like an, two animals, you know, enjoying themselves. And then, you know, they might wander off and they might mate with others. And the animals are not going to be jealous. Or they're not going to have their, they don't have dopamine coming up or anything. Yeah, there are some rivalries happening. But everything's happening in a much more now way, in a much more direct way, in a much more honest way. While we have, we with our, you know, more, this, this more convolutedness, and I don't know what's happening in the whales, they have more convolution, they have more giri and sulki in the brain they have much more complex brains than humans but it's very hard to study them and get into it because the language is very 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 fundamentally different so but they're trying they're starting to get into this i don't know how neurotic they are but maybe they're not as neurotic because they live in water so but living on land with gravity and having a convoluted brain led to, and Dr. Bruce Lipton talks about this in depth, it's very, very interesting. I highly recommend that book. So people, you know, because they've done studies, of course, you know, psychology, neu neurology, you know, neuroscience, they all work with statistics, basically, you know, they do long-term or, or short-term study projects where they have 
a certain amount of people and they have a certain amount of test people. I, I did all of my test person hours in the United States and Germany. I did like double or triple for the midterm exams because these are those are the things that make this into a scientific study field particularly psychology which is much more theoretical and leans more onto philosophy than onto a medical or a neuroscience field but it goes very strongly into neuroscience of course dr bruce lipton is a is a real neuroscientist who studied neurology and um, and with excellence and his work is absolutely excellent and he's been a professor for a very long time also and a researcher as well and so he has brought up all that information you know I don't know a lot of the information a lot uh, mentioned a lot of those studies done within the last 10 years on the subject where they tested people and where they where they found out that that the people who were madly in love which is the madness of it you know which is not love of course but it's this in love meaning like it's a complete wrong word but it means like it should really be called madly infatuated so that and so apparently with this madness of infatuation with someone else of you know a sexual desire you know comes and i've been through all of this in my life it's super embarrassing you know with james hetfield i had this phase it was in 2010 it was so intense I don't think I've ever, I've never ever experienced anything like this in my entire life. I've been in love, madly in love with professors. I've been in love with famous professors on the internet and all kinds of guys that are, you know, Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson and Dr. Lawrence Krauss and many others but then i fell in love with this singer james hadfield and that's also dr bruce lipton mentions this too is that you know when men sing you know <laughs> it has this effect on women you know and <laughs> it's it does something you know it's like they fall in love with the singer. That's why, you know, the minister singer in the Middle Ages, they would go, when they're in love with the princess, they would go in front of her bedroom window, which is somewhere up high in a tower, and they go, Rapunzel, let your golden hair down, and I will climb up on your hair and come into your room. You know, the minister singer in, during the Middle Ages, they were singing her heart throbbing love songs for these princesses and i got into this in 2015 or something i got into the minis minis song i i've always loved minis song it's very medieval music it's really, really beautiful and it's very it's very naive and childlike and and very simplistic melodies yet at that time and very sweet and very sincere particularly the ones that are more that are more on the high end the the, the high end mini singers that were that that were conversing with the aristocratic people with the people that were living in in the, among the royalties that were more educated that had read more books and more stuff so they were that was very they were very sincere and very sweet in their sing, singing and and the women would fall for that and but falling again this is this is this is a true word falling and falling 
in love, but falling in, into infatuation is a better word. I fall into infatuation and I kind of fall out of myself. I'm not, I'm not grounded really anymore inside of myself. I become like the other half. I become like half a human, you know. And there's a, there's a punk band from Germany, Einstürzende the Neubauten, which I love very deeply. They, they wrote a song like this, Halber Mensch, half a human you know, which refers to this, you know, this, and that's what Dr. Bruce Lipton talks about, you know, this infatuation, we become infatuated with someone, we can't even infatuate it, that means we, we can't even sleep anymore, you know, we're, 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 we become restless, and it was really bad, <laughs> who's that James Edfield, it went on for so long, man, which, you know, finally, he, what he's done, you know, fi finding out that he was a hunter, that ended it. Then finally, you know, that brought it, com com made it come crashing down to a complete end, like a like a car that drives against a wall and this stuff goes up in flames and smoke, and just comes to complete still stand, and that's what it was. Then finally because my mother instinct is much stronger than any infatuation or any, you know, singing or any good-looking face or void, deep voice or amazing-looking guy, you know. It wouldn't matter how amazing he looks. If he's a freaking hunter, he is not part of my life. Okay, so that's all there is to it. But it was very painful. I was so glad when it finally ended. I, I was so glad. And I felt like I don't ever want to do this again. I don't ever, ever, ever want to fall in into infatuation again, ever again, for the rest of my life. I don't ever want to experience this again. This teenage naiveness and and child childishness i don't ever want to get into this again you know this red-faced agitation you know and where you start to write poetry for that other person and you can't stop thinking about them and everything becomes about them nature the moon the moon it's all there for you you know the moon it's just oh god give me a break i mean this is this is so incredibly stupid you know and it's just so and it's so incredibly hormonal driven and it's so it's like a whole bunch of things come together you know like certain affinities and gen genetics and certain how someone's face is cut in a specific way that speaks to you and that's your genetics and that's your poetry and that's your that's artisticness too and then it's it's craving it is needing the mother wasn't there so then that becomes agitated and all of this kind of like works in a synergy and brings us into this feeling of infatuation and it's not a pleasant thing it's it's an agitated mind state it's madly in an in infatuation and it's not love, it is, it's not even romance the way it should be, you know, even if the other partner was responding, you know, which, you know, how can a famous guy respond when he has like 10,000 women doing the same thing and it's like, comes kind of hard, which, which one does he choose, you know, probably the one that's the youngest with the best body you know so <laughs> that's definitely certainly not me in the in in the overall average kind of taste so 
No, I'm not not a bar, not the Barbie. Okay, that throws him, herself on him. So, and I don't want ever want to do this again. I don't ever want to throw myself onto anyone ever again. I want to be happy. I want to. My goal is, and that's why I cried the the other day because I thought. I still suffer from this jealousy. I still suffer from this from this OCD. You know, when I have OCD, I can't touch certain items because the woman or the women that I was jealous of or I am still jealous of have touched that or have maybe a particle from them could have come onto that book or item in some roundabout way. And now I have to decontaminate my life from all of these items and paraphernalia and memorabilia <laughs> that are of value for my husband. I don't blame him for it, but it's it's cringy for me, you know. I just wanna you know, I just wanna take all of this, put it in black huge trash bags and put it onto the street and put a sign on free free stuff you know take please so now i can't do that you know i have to respect my husband obviously so and i know all of this at the very same time you know this program is running at the same time my prefrontal cortex knows this is totally wrong this is a burden then and then i fell into this I cried for like two hours saying I'm a prisoner of my own pain, you know. I am living here a prisoner of my own pain. And that's why I went to Prima Therapy to work on this when I was 26 in 1992. So, and I worked on this very, very, very rigorously every day. For three years, Arjanov was there, was teaching. It was going very well for all of us, for everyone. Everyone was moving forward, you know. People were having some quarrels among each other. They took it to the group session. They talked about it. Everything was an open book. Everyone was an open book, including the therapist, because we were also trainees. So there wasn't even a, a, a rift between us because of therapist versus client you know and this there shouldn't be a rift there should never be any kind of hierarchical plateau difference between a therapist and a client because the therapist is the client too the therapist is a patient and the patient the client is also his own therapist is also his own student is also constantly learning and therapy and learning are also two subjects that that have been used apart from each other but that are not apart okay a therapy process moving forward is a learning process a learning process is therapy as dr alan w anderson at san diego um, Cal State San Diego said to Jiddu Krishnamurti in 1995 and 1975, he said to him, I see that I have to actually also do therapy on my own vocabulary. And so all this learning process, you know, becoming more conscious about the words we use, this is also therapy and it's also a learning process at the same time. So there is no difference between it. It's just one and, and the same thing. It's, it's, it's a process and it's also the same as the healing process. So learning is healing. Therapy is healing. You know, it's a physical healing, it's a psychological healing, and it's a mental healing, and it's a it's a brain healing, and it's a consciousness healing. So all of this, all of these things are together in this. So there is no separation of any of this. It's, we need to become very clear about it. So the openness, you know, that. I become clear about my jealousy. I'm still a prisoner of my pain. I still have this OCD that is shackling me into my 
avoidance mechanisms, you know, avoidance of touching this and then I have to wash my hands, the decontamination processes that I go through and constant avoidance, you know, when I see someone like, or when I see people in general, you know, I can't get really close to them. I have to, I have to keep a distance, you know, when I'm standing in line at the cash register, and this is just a general thing also. This is all making me a prisoner of my pain. I stand in line, I have to keep away from the other person. The other person behind me is not doing the same thing, you know. They push their cart up to my butts, my butt cheeks, you know, sometimes slightly touching my butt cheeks, like with uh, the shopping cart, you know, and it's like, dude, <laughs> you know, but I don't want a confrontation, so then I just try to be just far enough away from the person in front of me, having my stuff nicely packed onto the bandwagon, the shopping cart in front of me, my ass touching the Snickers bar behind me, the person behind me getting really close looking like this all the time. It's like, oh, what does this guy want? And it's like, I, it's so hard for me to function in a store already. And then my husband gets mad at me if I don't look up the monitor of what they ring the stuff up. And like, you need to watch them. It's like, man, I'm overwhelmed. You know, going into a store is so overwhelming. You have no idea I can read people's energy fields. And most of these energy fields are completely out of alignment. And it's painful for me. And it, it reminds me of my own unalignment stuff and energies. And I feel like they want something. Or I feel like they are mad at me. Or they might be jealous too. Or they might be interpreting something into me. They see my face and that reminds them of a teacher they had that was a bitch or whatever, you know. It's like all these things, you know. And if we had a therapy like we had in, in L.A. with primal therapy, all of that stuff comes out, you know. It's flushed out, it's cleansed out, and everyone sees everyone's pain. And then we, we don't have to take these things anymore personally and think, oh, I bet they don't like me because of my pimple or because, you know, whatever the ego clings to, the pain, the unempowerment, the feeling of, oh, I bet I'm not likable. I bet they think I'm not likable. You know, they're taking these things personally from past our past pain with the mother giving us this impression. Dr. Bruce Lipton talks about all of this in depth in this book and brings this all together, you know, psychology and, and microbiology. It's so important that we understand this and, and what the neurotransmitters are doing. And the neurotransmitters are there. You know, we have natural neurotransmitters. That's the ones we want. We don't want the chemical ones, you know, that are causing even more unalignment, even on a bio biological level, on a visceral level. You, we don't want that to happen. So it's just not an option to take any kind of pharmaceutical, chemical, chemically fused artificial things, you know. So... We need to come back to nature and explore and find the stuff that helps us on a holistic basis, like all the way around, all the way around the ball. You know, there are, there are, there are so many facets all the way around that we can use and we can utilize. You know, for example, stuff that other people want to cut out of their gardens. You know, that's the most important thing for our bodies. Don't poison that stuff. Pick it, you know, and make tea with it. You can dry it. You can even grind it. If you have a grinder, you can make pow powder with it. You can take it in capsules. You can make cookies with it. But making tea with that's the 
easiest thing to do you know the even the thorns will soften when they are being boiled and and in a tea kettle and you, you drink that and you cleanse your liver that will cleanse your blood that will cleanse your brain out completely that washes all of that stuff out you know some people want to cling to these toxins because the toxins keep people in a state of resistance which they would rather be than bringing that stuff up, flushing it up and bringing this very painful stuff to the surface. But that's what we need to do. We need to bring the painful stuff to the surface. That's the most important thing there is, you know, like cayenne pepper brings that stuff to the f surface. Drinking a lot of water, a lot of tea, a lot of fluid, not alcohol beverages, not stuff that's toxic, not caffeinated stuff not all not these these popular po soda pops and all of this was benzoin benzo benzo what are sodium benzoates um i don't know what else is in there benzines you know from byproduct from the petroleum industry fused and altered chemicals from the raw oil we don't want to put that in our bodies. It's full of acids, you know, like it's full of battery acids. Dr. Schultz wrote about this in his book about 20 steps to holistic healing. You know, read his books, very important books that he wrote. Dr. Richard Schultz, he's fantastic. You know, he's a lifesaver and a complete life changer and a life expander for so many people people including my husband and my life and and all of our dogs so all the dogs all of our dogs benefited from his stuff some some of them liked the the superfood some of them didn't so you can get it in powder also you can mix it into the dog food it's kind of expensive but i'm putting kelp seaweed in you don't, I mean, Dr. Schultz's information is the most important thing there is because he brings people onto the holistic path. And on the holistic path, it, you're not subscribed to only one person's products. You can get all kind. you research and you find whatever you want to buy or whatever is in your budget, or you pick stuff for free, you know, like you pick apples. Like I talked about it many times in my videos, you go out there and you pick apples when they're ready. Right now the apples are ready and they're sweet and, and they are very aromatic and many different types of apples, you know. I ate some apples at the other house, they're, some of them are completely red now and they're very tart and sweet at the same time. Mouth watering, thinking about it, you know, they are so good for you eat like five apples per day, you have no idea how much that will expand your life. You will be amazed what that will do to you for your body and, and your mind and your thinking, your thoughts. It will brighten up your thoughts. It really will. And drink a lot of fluids, you know, all the time. Drink a lot of fluids and do what, I, what I'm doing. Put a three-gallon transparent water container on top of an affirmation sheet and you write on the affirmation sheet love and peace for my loved ones and myself coming into us the energy of the blue god the infinite cosmos shining his blue light energy into us giving us love you put hearts on it and the infinity sign and you write down health and abundance and everything you wish for, you know, you write down loving relationships, a lover, a partner, um, not infatuated, but a real love, a real love, a real in love and love, both, you know, so someone you can trust, you know, and as Dr. Bruce Lipton says, you know, most people when they, when they are in love or in this infatuation state, they have a fear of, they are in a, in, a, in a fear state at the same time that they are, you know, they have all these endorphin hormones and, and endorphin chemicals that are released, but they also have stress 
hormones and chemicals that are released in the body. So they have dopamine and they have other stuff that is, that makes them, including vasopressin in men that, that, that causes, um, that causes some anger and because possessiveness, but, but women can have that too, this possessiveness or this, or then this fear that what if he leaves and then what? I fall into an abyss, you know, like where you, you're half a human, you're not even grounded anymore. You, you need the other half to become whole, you know. So that's not the meaning of life, you know. That is, that's bypassing the meaning of life. So. No, we want to find someone that where we don't have to be worried, you know. He's there and he loves us, you know. And there's nothing to worry about. You can't say anything wrong. You you can't do anything wrong. If you do something wrong, he'll say to you, "What's going on? Let's talk about it," you know. Or you hurt me. I will bring he will bring this he'll bring this to the surface, you know, and say and say this hurt me what you said let's talk about it so and then and then we respond to this and say oh thank you for bringing this up or thank you for reminding me or i did, i wasn't even conscious about it let's talk about it you know oh this is my pain you know maybe i need to reflect on this maybe i need to do some more meditation on this and, and get deeper into it and as we open ourselves up to the other person, you know, first of all, you have nothing to lose. You have everything to gain in that process. But most people don't open up out of fear. And then they create the very thing that